used to be able to come to you all with the theme, the power of a prayer room. So at this time, we're going to pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to fall afresh on me. Father, in the name of Jesus, may your word impact my life in such a way as I speak. You will speak through me and you will speak to those that are listening. I pray, oh, Heavenly Father, that you would forgive me and that anything that stands between me and you that would hinder your people from uh, hearing your word, I ask for forgiveness. I pray for the anointing to fall afresh on me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. This evening, we're talking about the power of a prayer room. We know that prayer is a mighty weapon at the disposal of every man, a woman who loves God and knows his son, Jesus Christ. Consistent prayer also relieves the power of God's blessing on your life and circumstances. Jesus give us good guidelines for prayer in Matthew 6, 6. When you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you, Matthew 6, 6. Connection with heavenly power in your prayer room, your prayer closet, or your prayer corner. There are strong forces in prayer, far beyond what we imagine. It says that God will do exceedingly abundantly above all we can act or think, according to Ephesians 3.20. It is therefore important to devote yourself to prayer. Many forget their prayer rooms or their prayer corners or their prayer closets, so they miss out on the greatest blessing. Through prayer, we come into connection with the heavenly power. The great effects of prayer, the ministry taking place in the power of prayer in your prayer closet, in your prayer room, in your prayer station is hidden. And not many people think about it. Our prayer room is just like a room at the power station. According to God's mighty law, the power of God's grace is triggered directly wherever you want it. Just as the people at the power station does not fully understand what happens when they turn the handle and all this power goes everywhere. Your obedience to God's law is triggering great effects in your prayer life. Join to the Lord in your prayer room space, be it a closet, be it a corner, be it a room. It's good to spend some time alone with God. The door is closed and you have contact with God. It can be at any time of day or night. You can come before the Lord's face in prayer with your requests. It should be simple and powerful prayer. Then God is in your prayer room and the angels are there according to Corinthians 6, 17. It is written that if you join to the Lord, you are one spirit with him. You can lay your children before him, as well as church members and sick and infirm. We get more and more to pray for. Even though we feel miserable, nothing can break us when we are joined together in prayer with Jesus. Jesus is a spiritual prayer. It's a spiritual battle. Do not become blinded by the difficulties today's turmoil and small problems block our view. It is so easy to get caught up in them, but turn to God and get your help from him, just as the psalmist does in Psalms 121, 1 and 2. I will lift up mine eyes into the hill from which comes my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and, and earth. The results of prayer is a new strength, a new spirit, and may, may progress in doing all that you know to do for the Lord. In Thessalonians 1.17, pray without ceasing. 
pray without ceasing? Whoa, does that mean we don't stop to eat or sleep or do anything? No, we do what is natural for us to, to live, but we are also be centered on the hope we have in Christ Jesus. Your hearts are our cover hole of prayer. God hears an answer and even gives us our heart's desire, which will be according to his will when the Holy Spirit prays in and through us. Romans 8, 26 and 28. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our infirmities. But we know not what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit itself make his intercession for us with groaning, which cannot be altered. And he that searches the heart knows what is in the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. In Jude 1 20, but ye beloved building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Have you ever considered creating a prayer room or a prayer corner? A prayer closet, a place where you can go to alone in privacy, no spend quality time and focus on prayer time. This is something I found beneficial in my distracted life to be able to pray more like I want to as you pull back the curtain on a very private part of your life, my prayer closet. Why? a prayer room, closet, or a corner is beneficial because prayer matters to God. It is powerful. According to James 5, 16, it said, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. In today's super electronical connected world, it's what we need to really be able to quiet our heart is to hear the voice of God. It is eye-opening the things that God wants to reveal to you through a dedicated prayer life and prayer time. Insight into your life, your relationship, your motivation and understanding God's purpose for your life according to Jeremiah 3, 33, 2 and 3. This is what the Lord says. He who made the earth the Lord who formed it and established it. The Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. We are commanded to devote ourselves to prayer according to Colossians 4.2. Devote yourself to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. So many times we spend so much time asking God for so much till we don't take time to thank him but he already has done. For the future of our, us, our children, and our land, 2 Chronicles 7, 14 say, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. We are told to pray continuously according to Thessalonians 5, 7 and be faithful in prayer. How often do we actually currently pray? Probably not as much as we would like to. According to Romans 12, 12, be hopeful in hope, patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. Following Jesus' example of withdrawing to a solitary place to, pray, place to pray. According to Luke 22, 39, we see that Jesus withdrew and knelt to pray. And in Mark 137, very early, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. We are told to pray in secret, according to Matthew 6, 5, and 6. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they have, they love to pray standing in the synagogue on the street corners to be seen by others. 
truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to the father who is unseen. Then your father who is, sees what is done in secret will reward you. How to set up your own prayer room, closet or corner. First, consider if there's an extra, extra closet or a corner space in your house when you can comfortably sit and kneel to pray. You know, let me tell you my personal testimony about my prayer ministry. You know, God allows us as, especially as women and that husband, we build these beautiful homes. And in these homes, we say everything under the sun we would like to have. We want roomy kitchen. We want big closet. We want huge bathrooms. We want offices. We want all of these things. But how many of us take time to have a prayer room, a prayer closet, or a prayer corner in our home? It may currently be used. You don't have to have anything so big. It can be a storage closet filled with stuff that we don't need. You can take that, clear out all the clutter, and set you up a prayer area where you can meet with Jesus every day. If a little space like this does not exist in your home, try to be creative with an alternative. It's that space on the floor of your bedroom where you could be alone, leave a Bible, a prayer photo album, and things of that description. It just need to be electronic free zone. No iPad, no iPhone, no laptop. Two, equip yourself with a little space with a lamp. It doesn't have to be a lot of lighting, just enough for you to have the aliens you need to invite Jesus' presence. Also, I find it helpful to keep a throw pillar in there to be a little more comfortable. Print off photos of people in your life that you want to be regularly praying for. Either put them on a tag board or a little prayer photo album that you keep in your prayer closet. Looking at people's faces seem to help me remember to pray for them and then to pray more specifically for what they're going through. When you have a prayer closet or a prayer room or a prayer corner, you can pray specifically to the Lord for things that you need him to do. So many times when we pray, we pray general prayers. Lord, I need a job. Our Lord, I need this, I need that. But we need to be pacific with God. God wants us to be pacific with him. Then let's pray using the ACTS uh, acronym. Spend time on each letter. Adoration. Spend some time adoring and worshiping God by declaring things about who he is. Altogether good, loving, just, faithful. In Psalm 145, 3, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Confession. Spend time confessing your own sins to God. According to John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will and to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all righteousness. Thanksgiving. Spend time listening out things you are thankful for. Finding things to be thankful for will help you understand God's purpose and hardship. According to Ephesians 6.20, and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 50.23, but giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep to my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. Supplication. This is a part where you bring your different requests to God for yourself, for your fellow men, for your Christian friend, for your 
children, for your family, for people who you don't know, uh, for your country, for different situations around you and around the world. According to Timothy 2 first, one, he said, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people, not some people, not your friends, not your relatives, but for all people. Ask God to help them to intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray with an open Bible. God uses his word, the Bible, to speak into our lives and reveal himself. I would suggest that this should be an actual hard copy of the Bible, not electronically, to God against potential distraction. Keep a journal in your prayer room. You will want to be writing down the things that God will start revealing to you. Also, your, your, your journal, you will journal the things you are praying for. You will be encouraged and praise God when God answers your prayer. It is timely. Otherwise, you may not even notice when God moves and responds to your prayer. Consider getting your pens, your pencil, your marker, your notepads, your books of encouragement, devotional book. Keep it in your prayer closet or your prayer room. Spend time praying in a kneeling position if possible. Something about kneeling to pray really seems to keep your heart humble before God and help me and helps you naturally tend toward worshiping him. This does not happen to be all of the time, but when you really want to get close to the Lord, get humble yourself on your knees. Psalm 95, 6 says, come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. If the idea of spending more extended time in your prayer seem overwhelming, set a kitchen timer or watch, not a smartphone which can distract you. Then set the alarm to go off in a set amount of minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes. I think you'll be surprised how fast time flies. Once you really start praying through the different people and situations in your life, just get yourself into a prayer closet, into a prayer room, into a prayer corner. If you make, if you can make it that far, I think that actually praying will be an easy part of tearing ourselves away from the endless hours of work from TV and Facebook and email. That's the hard part. That is often what keeps us from hearing from God, being distracted. Don't be discouraged if this feels unnatural and hard. Prayer is a spiritual disciple. So that infers it will take time, effort, and energy. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it reduces a harvest of righteousness. Peace for those who have been trained by it, according to Hebrews 12, 11. The real beauty of having a prayer room, a closet, or a corner is focusing out on all the distractions. We can fo focus out on all of the distractions that keeps us from having that kind of prayer life that God would have us to have. It is so important to have power through prayer. And the only way we can have power through prayer is to pray without ceasing. Be sincere. When you start praying in your prayer room, your prayer closet or your prayer corner, you will find that you will have power that you never dreamed of. You will see that you wake up in the middle of the night praying. You go to sleep praying because prayer becomes so much a part of your life till you cannot do anything without the power of prayer. You will see the joy and the peace that in any situation you find yourself in, you will have God's joy and God's peace. Prayer is the thing that kept Jesus together. 
when he had to go through all the things that he went through with, it was only the power of prayer that kept him focused. And not only was he focused, but because of the power of prayer, he could trust God unconditionally. We need to learn how to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not unto our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him and allow him to direct our path. He promised us that we would pray and believe and trust in him that he would open doors and no man can shut and shut doors and no man can open and no power, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So in closing, let's remember the power of an intimate and personal relationship with Jesus come from the power of your personal prayer room. So tonight, we're asking each and every one of you all to search your homes and find an intimate place, whether it be a room, whether it be a corner, or whatever it is. May it be a closet. Take time to get intimate with Jesus through the power of prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to come before you in prayer. We thank you for placing in our heart a desire to have that intimate time with you away from our friends and our family, our children, the hustle and bustle of life, and just fall in love with you all over again. And when it's all said and done, Father, we'll be so careful to give you all of the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.